Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Q flash button to flash the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite Wi Fi motherboard without having a CPU, memory, or graphics card installed. Now, just to be clear, this procedure will also work on a fully assembled system, but you can also use it on a bare system. That's what I'm going to show you in the video. These are the key steps to using QFlash Plus. I'm not going to read every single step. You can pause it and read them yourself, but it's important that you watch the entire video and follow the directions exactly. Otherwise, you're likely to miss something and it probably won't work. The first thing you need to do is go to the Gigabyte website and find your motherboard. So the motherboard for this video is shown right here and the link will be in the description. Then you go to the support page and you need to go to the BIOS section to download the proper BIOS for this motherboard. But before we do that, let's go to the CPU support page. And this shows the different CPUs that are supported by this motherboard. And the far right column shows the minimum BIOS version that you need to support that CPU. So if you're gonna be running a Ryzen 5000 series, you need F30 or newer. So going back to the download page and going to the BIOS section, you can see that there's release notes under the description for each BIOS version. So F30 is the oldest version that will work with a Ryzen 5000 series processor. But I'm gonna go ahead and download the newest one at the time of the recording. So it's F33G and it's a pretty small download. It'll come down in a zip file. And then after that, we'll do some work we need to do to that file to get it ready to use to flash the BIOS. But the first step, again, is to download the right BIOS. Our next step is to find that file that we just downloaded, and it's a zip file. So we'll have to extract it to get to the contents. So you can use the extract all command like I'm using right here. And then I like to move the window up here. And now you can see the actual BIOS file. It's only 16 megabytes and we're gonna to have to rename it. But before you do that, double check to make sure that file name extensions are enabled on your system in Windows Explorer. I just turned them off and now I turn them back on. You can see how it changes. And it's really important that they're turned on. Next, you're gonna actually rename it. So whatever it's called now, change it to gigabyte.bin. So it has to be that exact name, not something else. This is really important for this procedure to work. So gigabyte.bin, and then get rid of whatever file name extension is already there. So it's just gigabyte.bin. And you'll get a warning from Windows, which you can ignore. So the next step is to go down into your USB drive and make sure that it's formatted with FAT32, not NTFS, not XFAT, it has to be FAT32. And if it's not FAT32, you'll have to reformat it. So after you do that, then we'll go ahead and copy that file down from our machine to the thumb drive. And it has to be in the root of the USB drive, not in a folder or directory. That's also critically important for this procedure. So now you have it, you've prepared the file and it's on the USB drive. Now, before we go any further, I just wanna show some frequently asked questions. I'm not gonna read them to you. You can pause it and read them yourselves, but these questions come up over and over and over again on previous videos. So hopefully these will answer the most common questions that you might have. And again, please watch the entire video so you don't miss any steps, because this is a fairly tricky procedure. Now I have my motherboard mounted on a test bench and I'm plugging in the 24 pin connector at the top. I'm gonna to show a photo of this in a second. And then I'm gonna plug in the eight pin EPS connector right there at the bottom left. You need to plug in these two power connectors. And don't worry, this works on a fully assembled system or on a bare system. So the 24 pin connector is up there and the eight pin connector is right there. Here's the main 24 pin power connector. And here's what the eight pin connector looks like, the EPS connector. And then finally, here's the entire motherboard mounted on my test bench with both power cables plugged in. If you don't have a test bench, you can just set your motherboard on top of the motherboard box and that'll work just fine. 
Here's the rear I.O. shield where you're going to plug in the USB drive. It has to go in the white port that's labeled BIOS. So take that USB drive that you prepared ahead of time and just plug it into that port. Next, turn on the switch on your power supply if it has a switch. You also want to make sure your power supply is plugged into the wall. Next, you need to locate the Q Flash Plus button on the motherboard, and it's pretty close to the CMOS battery, as you can see right there. Here's a photo of the Q Flash Plus button that's actually on the motherboard. Many other motherboards have this button back on the rear I.O. shield, but on this model, it's actually on the motherboard itself, so I need to find that. So now we're finally ready to press the Q Flash Plus button. Just hold it down for a second or so, and then you'll see some lights flashing that I'll show you in another shot here. If your flash drive has an LED, it should be blinking. And it might not blink the entire time, but it should blink a few times. But what's more important is on the motherboard, right next to the Q flash button, you have an LED that's going to be flashing the entire time that the BIOS is being flashed. And if this only flashes for 5 or 10 seconds, something is wrong. And here you can see both of the LEDs flashing. If this is working correctly, it should take six to seven minutes, not five to 10 seconds and not an hour. So you're gonna see this flashing on the USB drive intermittently, but what's more important is what's going on on the motherboard on that LED next to the flash button. And that's gonna be flashing for six to seven minutes. And when it's done, that will stop flashing. And that's how you know it's actually done. So that's what you wanna really pay attention to. And again, this should take six to seven minutes, not just a few seconds, and not an hour. So what do you do next? Well, if you've got a bare system like this, you just need to turn off the power supply and unplug it and then assemble it and see if it will post. If it's a completed system, just go ahead and turn it off and then turn it on normally and see if it works. That's all there is to it. And you really can't tell whether or not it worked until you try to turn it on and see if it will post. Really? You have a lot to say. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out.